Well, Merry Christmas and welcome to Kirkwood Valley Presbyterian Church Christmas Eve service. We're so glad you've decided to join us today. If you'd like to go over to our website, kirkval.org, please feel free to print out or download a copy of our bulletin where you can follow along with the order of service and also our announcements. We'll be serving communion today virtually a bit later in our service. So if you'd like to participate in the Lord's Supper, please um, have both bread and juice, preferably grape juice available at that time. And let's begin our time together to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Will you please join me in prayer? Oh Lord God, thank you that you give us the privilege of celebrating the holiest of nights. Thank you that you give us the privilege of celebrating Christmas, the birth of your Son and our Lord Jesus, dear Lord. We pray that our worship today will be glorifying to you. We pray that you allow us to draw near to you as you draw near to us. And we thank you that you allow us to spend this time celebrating, worshiping, and proclaiming um, your truth and the good news found in Christ Jesus. We pray all this in the precious name of Jesus, and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. And now over to Mark and Kayla for our first praise song. Well, good evening, everyone at Kirk at the Valley. Welcome to our Christmas Eve service. And just imagine this evening that it is nice and clear like Southern California skies usually are. It is getting close to midnight, okay? Ooh, yeah. So let's sing together. Peace on the earth, the 
Thank you to Mark and Kayla for leading us in our first praise song. We're now going to share a few brief announcements together. Please feel free to follow along in your bulletin. The first of which is we continue to have a virtual children's um, Sunday school um, each week. You can look at the details of how that schedule works in the bulletin. And if you have any questions about our children's ministries, please feel free to email, email us at childrensministries at kirkval.org. Second, thank you for your ongoing generosity. And even in the midst of a season where we're not meeting physically together in the sanctuary, you can continue to give in two ways. One of which is to write a check and mail it to the Kirk office. The second of which is to give online on our website, kirkval.org. The details of how to do so are also included in our bulletin. And again, thank you for your generosity and faithfulness. And third, we continue to share our ministry entitled Counting Your Blessings. If you'd like to participate in that ministry, please feel free to um, take a picture to, especially what you might be doing during this uh, Christmas season, add a little caption and send all of that together via email to fellowship at kirkval.org. If you'd like to see what others within the Kirk community have been up to lately, please feel free to go back to our website, navigate over to the Fellowship tab, and select Counting Your Blessings on the drop-down menu. And if you ever have any questions about any of the ministries at the Kirk, or you have a praise report or prayer request you'd like to share, please feel free to email us at that same email address, fellowship at kirkval.org. We're now going to share in a virtual passing of the peace. Please feel free to pause for a moment and consider who the Holy Spirit might be prompting to reach out to on this Christmas Eve or on Christmas Day. And as you do so, please feel free to share the love and the joy and the peace of Christ with that person or those people. We're now going to share in our call to worship. So please join me as we do so. And you can follow along in your bulletin. On this holiest of nights, we come, join, joining the shepherds who are stunned by wonder, on this most holy, excuse me, on this most silent night, we come, our hopes and dreams joining those of Mary and Joseph. And on this night of carols and candlelight, we come, our glad songs joining with the choirs of angels over us. And we're now going to have a lighting of the Christ candle. Jesus is born. We light these candles as a sign of the coming light of Christ, who is called the Son of the Most High, and of whose kingdom there will be no end. About the hour of Christ's coming no one knows. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. Hear the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Yeah! With John the Baptist, we testify to Christ the light, so that all might believe through him. With Mary we pray, let it be with us according to your word, for nothing will be impossible with God. Now fear not, for there is good news of great joy for all people. To us is born this day in Bethlehem a Savior, the Messiah, the Lord. Jesus is born! Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God endures forever. Time for my favorite carol, Joy to the, the World. world. <laughs>
Merry Christmas. Thank you to Mark and Kayla for leading us in our Christmas, our opening Christmas hymn. We're now going to read our scripture for today. If you have a Bible with you at home, please feel free to turn to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. We're going to be reading verses 1 through 16. You can also follow along in your bulletin. Again, we're reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. Here's what God's Word says. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of, Beth of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. And in that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. This, my sisters and brothers, is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're now going to have a special music ministry of an original song with the words and music created by Mark. Well, this is a special time for me because Christmas can be very inspirational as we get very, very close to celebrating the birth of our Savior. So here's a song about something that we do every Christmas season. At least we uh, used to physically, but now it's maybe more electronically. But we all receive Christmas cards. So one time I got a kind of a special one. Every day this time of year, the mailbox fills with Christmas cheer. Letters, postcards we all send to all our relatives and friends. Scenes of Santa on his sleigh, the elves and reindeer laugh and play. So many different ways to say. Have a happy holiday. There's family pictures and diatribes outline the changes in our lives. Another year has come and gone, and Father Time keeps marching on. Today, another card arrived in a language I did not recognize, so I opened up and to peek inside. This picture caught me by surprise. A major scene was drawn by hand, a simple message to understand. The painter lived so far away, but he knew the greatness of this day. It made me think and realize we're all God's people in His eyes. So let it be heard, let it be known. This night the earth receives God's only song. All over the world, the angels will sing. And the storm will guide us to a newborn king. 
So let it be heard and let it be known. Christ our Lord will lead all of us home. For the Great Wall of China still standing tall to the crumpled ruins of the Berlin Wall, the Eiffel Tower in the heart of France. Tonight it glows with a new romance From all the corners of the earth We all rise up and rejoice his birth The black skin, the white skin, yellow or brown Light shade, dark shade, square or round Well, there's capitalists, communists, kings and queens Leftists, rightists, and all extremes Christian Jews and Buddhist monks There's Catholic Muslims, even thugs and punks So let it be heard Let it be known Oh, this night the earth receives God's only Son All over the world the angels will sing And the star will guide us to our newborn King So let it be heard and let it be known Christ our Lord will lead all of us home well, that eastern star that shines so bright, the whole world can see the light, and everyone is invited to come. Come join the fun and know. Let it be known This night the earth receives God's only son All over the world The angels will sing And the star will guide us to A newborn king So let it be heard and let it be known. Christ our Lord will lead all of us home. Well, Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. It's finally here. The anticipation is over. The promised child who Isaiah prophesied about some 700 years before has finally been born in Bethlehem in the city of David. The one who was called by Isaiah, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. He has finally arrived. Amen? God's mystery and beauty and power and love all wrapped up in the form of a little baby. Someone so fragile, so vulnerable. You know, do you remember the time if you've ever held a newborn in your arms? If you've done so, you know the fragileness and the preciousness of that little life that you're holding, completely reliant on you to keep him or her safe. Can you see the great mystery involved here? The one who holds human history in his very hands has entered right into that history and has forever altered it. The creator has become part of the creation. The infinite has become finite. God himself has taken on flesh to dwell with us, humanity. But it's so easy to miss if we aren't paying attention. 
if our expectations are different or if our eyes are fixed on other things. You see, the birth announcement that came that first Christmas night and was proclaimed by angels, that birth announcement wasn't given to the emperor in Rome or to the religious elite or the wealthy in Jerusalem, the two centers of power. Instead, it was given to some shepherds watching their flocks in the field, the other part of society. And this little baby who would become the most important and powerful person in the history of humanity, he wasn't born into a royal palace or to a wealthy family himself, but instead he was born to an undistinguished young couple that had made a trek from Galilee all the way down to Bethlehem. And he was born inside a stall, excuse me, inside a stable, because there wasn't room for any guests in the ends, they were all filled up. It's so easy to miss that because it might be thought of as the ordinariness of it. But let's think back to uh, another story that happened a bit more recently, around the turn of the last century, 1903, December of that year, after many attempts the Wright brothers, Orville and Wilbur, were finally successful in getting their flying machine off the ground and into the air in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. And they were thrilled over the accomplishment. And they telegraphed their message to their sister Catherine saying, we have actually flown 120 feet. We'll be home for Christmas. And Catherine on receiving that telegram, she rushed over to the editor of the local newspaper, showed him the telegraph. He glanced at it and said, oh, how nice. The boys will be home for Christmas. He totally missed the big news that for the first time in human history, man had flown. So as we, in 2020, as we celebrate Christmas together, we have the privilege of not glossing over this good news that was announced by a divine messenger. But instead, we get to enter in embrace, celebrate, and even recognize our need for a Savior, our need for Jesus. And as we do so, let us remember that the gift of the Christ child was bathed in God's love, in God's desire to become more intimate with us sinful humanity, not staying far away, not staying at a distance from his creation but instead willing to enter in, to become one of us, so that God could communicate with us directly in the person of Jesus, and so that we would not miss out on a relationship with a holy and perfect God who loves us in ways it's hard for us to even imagine. Paul Harvey tells a story about a particular family on Christmas Eve. Now, the way these family dynamics were set up is that the mother and the children, they would go off to a Christmas Eve church service. And the father, instead, would stay home, and he would busy himself by reading the newspaper. And when the family would return from church, they would gather together, and they would exchange gifts with one another. And it wasn't that this father was an evil man. It was just that he had gotten to the point in his life where he couldn't believe in the childhood stories of a God becoming a baby and being born in a manger. So as the rest of his family left for church, his wife and his children left for church, he plopped down in a chair by the fireplace, opened up the newspaper, and he began reading. And then he heard a thump, a tap, 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 after that on the window. And he noticed that there was a bird that kept flying against the glass of the window, trying to get out of the cold and the snow outside and into the warmth of his home. And so the man had compassion on the bird. And he went outside 
hoping to bring it back in and warm it up. But as he approached the bird, just, the bird just flew that much more towards the window, even harder. And pretty soon the bird, as he flew towards the man's home, missed and landed in some bushes. And half frozen, it stared at the man as he approached him. And he moved frantically away into the snow, into the thorns of the bush, trying to escape. And after a few minutes, this man started saying, but little bird, you can injure yourself. And he yelled out in frustration, stupid bird, can't you understand that I'm trying to help you? Then he paused and he thought, if you only understood you wouldn't try to fly away. If only, if only I could become a bird and get you to understand. And just at that moment, the church bells rang, as they always did on the hour. But this time, the man heard the bells ring for the first time with new ears and with a new heart. And he fell to his knees and he began to cry, saying, oh God, oh God, I didn't understand. Oh God, I didn't understand. You see, my friends, at that particular moment, this particular man finally understood what Christmas was truly all about. God himself made man in taking on human flesh, dwelling among us because he needed a savior. And frankly, my friends, we all need a savior. Let's be perfectly frank with one another. 2020 has been a tough year. The coronavirus is still among us. Cases are increasing. Hospitalization rates are increasing. Some of us have either gotten the virus ourselves or know people close to us who have gotten it. And my humble prayer is that those who have contracted this virus will be fully healed and restored by the loving and powerful hand of God. Many of us also might be feeling a bit lonely a bit sad that we won't be able to spend time in the family gatherings that we've been so used to over the years with our loved ones. Then there are also questions about when the economy will open back up. And even further questions about whether or not the political parties in Washington, D.C. can decide on whether or not this country can receive a, a second stimulus round, and if so, how much? Much less the need for racial reconciliation that continues to rear its ugly head when systemic racism and even more overt forms of racism occur. If there is ever a time when we need a savior, when we need Jesus, it's right now. And that's the beauty, my friends, of our God. God knew that we, a broken people, living in a broken world, would need Jesus just as much now as the broken people living in that broken world 2,000 years ago needed him when Jesus himself was born. That's why Jesus entered into our reality, fully God and fully human. Madeline Langle says this about the birth of the Christ child. That was no time for a child to be born. With the earth betrayed by war and hate, in the land in the crushing grip of Rome, honor and truth were trampled by scorn. Yet here did the Savior make his home. When is the time for love to be born? The inn is full on the planet earth, yet love still takes the risk of birth.
friends, God sent Jesus out of love, was willing to take that risk for you and for me and for every single person that recognizes a need for a Savior, for Jesus to save them from themselves, from ourselves, and from the world around us where others are also in need of a Savior. So as we celebrate this Christmas, let us allow ourselves to be reminded of who Jesus is as we look around and partake in our celebrations. An anonymous or unknown author has written what they call some Christmas reminders that I'd like to share with you. They start by saying, may the Christmas gifts remind us of God's greatest gift, his only son. May the Christmas candles remind us of him who is the light of the world. May the Christmas trees remind us of another tree upon which he died. May the Christmas cheer remind us of him who said, be of good cheer. May the Christmas feast remind us of him who is the bread of life. May the Christmas bells remind us of the glorious proclamation of his birth. May the Christmas carols remind us of this, remind us of the sun the angels sang about, glory to God in the highest. And may the Christmas season remind us in every way of Jesus Christ, our King. And as we're reminded, my friends, of who Jesus is as we look around us and we celebrate this Christmas, we also have the opportunity to share some of God's love with the people around us, to show others that yes, the birth of this little baby means something. It isn't just a legend or a myth that we tell ourselves to make us feel warm and fuzzy in the midst of a tough time. Rather, this is truly God made man, an historical event Jesus was born in a real city, Bethlehem, and he was born at a particular time when Caesar Augustus was emperor of Rome and Quirinius was the governor of Syria. And as the angel proclaimed, he is, this child is the Messiah, the Lord. So as you're exchanging physical gifts or having virtual hugs with people, this Christmas, and by the way, Vincent has already opened a couple of his Christmas gifts and he's been thrilled about that and excited to open even more tomorrow. But as you open these gifts and as you spend time with loved ones, rather other in person or virtually, I would encourage you to consider how you can personally give gifts that might not be wrapped up with beautiful wrapping paper or ribbons or bows but wrapped up with the love of Christ, whose value can't be measured in dollars and cents and wrapped up in a nice tidy box. Charles Swindoll has some ideas of what some of these gifts might look like. He says, some gifts you give at Christmas are beyond monetary value. And he goes on to list them. He says, mend a quarrel, dismiss suspicion. Tell someone I love you. Give a gift anonymously. Forgive someone who has treated you wrongly. Turn away with a soft answer. Visit someone in a nursing home. Apologize if you are wrong. Be especially kind to someone with whom you work. And give as God has given you in Christ without obligation or announcement, or reservation, or hypocrisy. And my friends, I would even invite you to be creative um, as you consider how you can be intentional about giving these kinds of gifts. Because you see, my friends, Jesus was and is God's gift to us. But what we become, what we do with our lives, how we reflect the gift of Christ back into the lives of others 
not just this Christmas season, but every day of our lives. That's our gift back to God. And while this particular Advent season and this particular year has drawn to a close and we celebrate Christmas, let us remember that we continue to live in a second Advent season that's ongoing. And as we do so, let us remember that this Christ child whose birth we celebrate, he eventually grew up. He grew up with a person who 33 years later would willingly give up his own life for each and every one of us. He would willingly go to the cross. He would willingly take a crown of thorns and nails in his hands and his feet. He would willingly shed his blood and take our sins on his shoulders, the ultimate act of love and humility. And he would do so by grace and faithfulness, opening a place for us to have a relationship with God that would last forever, that we couldn't achieve on our own merits. And he has gone ahead of us after he burst out of the grave at the resurrection three days later and ascended into heaven and seats at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again. He will come again in glory and power to usher in an age to come that will never end. Well, God will dwell with us forever face to face in the new heaven and the new earth. And there will be no more sorrow, no more tears, no more sadness for that old age who have passed away. And there won't even be a need for sunlight because God will be the light. But none of the rest of that happens if Jesus doesn't first choose to humble himself, to empty himself out and step out of the glory of heaven and be willing to be born, God incarnate, on that very first holy Christmas night out of love. Indeed, a child is born. He is the Messiah, the Lord. May each, of one of, well, each and every one of you, my friends, have a holy and blessed Christmas. Will you pray with me? Lord God, what a wondrous marvel it is that you loved us so much that you were willing to send your son into the messiness and the brokenness of this earth to show yourself to us in a way that we need it. Thank you for the love so deeply embedded in your relationship with us and in that powerful and mysterious act of the Incarnation. We pray, O oh Lord, as we celebrate Christmas together, that you will continue to allow us to reflect the love and the joy and the peace of Christ through ourselves and into the lives of those around us so that you will be the one glorified and people will know that Jesus is indeed Messiah and Lord. We love you, O oh God. We pray all this in the precious name of Jesus and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen.
Thank you, Eric, for leading us in our response hymn. We now have the privilege of partaking in the Lord's Supper right here during our Christmas Eve service. To participate, please feel free to have bread and juice, preferably grape, handy. And if you need to pause and go get some, please feel free to do that as well. Will you pray with me, my friends? Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. Scripture tells us that God's people will come from east and west, from north and south, to be together at this, the table in the kingdom of God. And after that, Christ's child was born, some 33 years later, on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus was gathered together with his disciples, his friends, those whom he was closest with, in an upper room observing the Passover. And Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to God, and broke it, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Take and eat it, all of you. And in a similar manner, after they had supped, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to God, and poured it, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant. It is my blood shed for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink it, all of you. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the saving life, death, and life everlasting of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, whose birth we celebrate today. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And all who trust in Christ are invited to come to this table, which has been prepared since the foundation of time. Please pray with me again. Almighty God, Abba Father, we give you thanks and praise for your faithfulness to us. And we pray that by grace through faith in your Son, Jesus our Lord, that our faithfulness to you and your call in our lives would be strengthened. We pray that your Holy Spirit would rest on these earthly gifts of bread and juice, that they would be and become for us the body and blood of Christ, and that as we partake of them, as they enter into us, that we would be strengthened and fortified, not only physically, but spiritually, mentally, and emotionally as well, in order to do as he called us, to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Eric is now going to lead us in our communion song, and as he does so, please look and listen for instructions of when to partake of each of the elements during the song.
Christ shed for you. Thank you, Eric, for leading us in our communion prayer. Will you pray with me again? Lord God, on this night of nights when we celebrate the birth of your Son, our Lord Jesus, we are mindful that he came to us in the form of a baby, and it had a cost. He came to us humble and vulnerable, and then when all the power in heaven and earth had been given to him, he laid down his life for us. And we commemorate that with the Lord's Supper. And we thank you to give us the privilege of partaking in that sacrament together this evening as sisters and brothers in Christ. May you be with us tonight and through this entire Christmas season and as we go into the rest of our lives into 2021 and beyond. And may you be the one glorified in everything we do. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, my friends, we're going to pray together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now over to Mark and Kayla for our closing song. Well... If you don't really know what tomorrow is, then maybe you have been somewhere out of touch. Perhaps. But I think tomorrow is Christmas! <laughs> Jesus, no crying, he makes a love.
Thank you, Mark and Kayla, for leading us in our closing song. And my friends, as we conclude our time together on this particular service, at this particular Christmas, please receive this benediction. A child has been born for us. God's grace has been given to us. From a stable in Bethlehem, our Savior has come. We have seen the glory of the Lord revealed in the face of the Christ child. We can hardly contain our amazement. Tell the world, treasure the story, ponder it in your heart. Rejoice, rejoice, Christ has come. And all God's people said, Amen.